Hey guys, we're going to look at the X399 motherboards with a new Threadripper. We'll be right back. All right, we're going to be looking at the Gigabyte motherboard. I'm using this program because I can actually zoom in and take a quick peek at this thing. Now, let's get into this real fast. I don't want to make take too much of your time this is the gigabyte auroras this is a pci express 16x first slot so underscore one means there's another one so here's this second one underscore two so these are two pci express 16x slots then there is an 8x underscore one and then we're going to assume that the other 8x one is over uh 8x underscore two is over here somewhere i mean the wording that is we know that this one is the the second 8x because there is underscore one this happens to say four so this is a 4x slot so 8 16 4 8 16 so um if you want to do quad slide which you can do just that your board or your rather your case needs to be pretty big because one video card will be here and then that's two three four like so but if your power supply is real close to the edge of that motherboard you won't be able to get the fourth video card in so you need to be to have a pretty large case and plenty of room below that if you want to do quad sly or crossfire that is so this is a very beefy motherboard. I'm assuming like the MSI board that there is sound blaster on here. I have no idea. I don't know the specifics of the capability of this, but we're going to go over it quickly just by viewing it. Here's your audio header. Looks like there's some LED communications here for adding some sort of LED lights to the board. Um, Reset switch, CMOS switch, power switch, nothing fancy. They added all the fanciness along the um, the motherboard itself, the LED lighting and everything like that. Um, USB 2.0 headers, two of them here. Then USB 3.0, nice digital readout for the configure like the output of the system. You know, if the it's going to post, which stands for a power on self test. If you didn't know that, uh, the regular pinouts for your power reset hard drive lights power light and whatever else speaker if you're gonna plug in a speaker here so you hear little beeps and boops when the thing boots up eight sata connections uh usb 3.1 connection here the standard atx connector this is what i want to show you guys which is really cool and there was a lot of speculation of someone you know amd including the aio um heatsink and fan um, but this kind of confirms it system fan pump CPU option and CPU fan so these three headers here are dedicated to the CPU how cool is that um, more it looks like LED headers here so white blue red green 12 volts so it looks like this this is the input or the output for your LED lighting two more headers here for fans uh, they definitely didn't skimp on the on the headers for the fans that's for sure because there's another one up here <laughs> that I noticed this has one eight pin for power for the CPU and an additional four pin for power for the CPU some boards I've noticed have eight pins I mean two eight pins that is this one happens to have an eight and a four also if you didn't notice it this supports three m.2 slots one here one here and one here so that's very interesting um it does support 128 gigs of memory it does look like it's only three slots but there's actually four look at the black the leds make it look a little funky and only have three slots but they're four so you have a 128 gigs of ram maximum uh so this is a feature pack board. I would love to get my hands on this baby. Because if I 
do plan on getting the 1950X, I want to pop it in this baby. Um, I believe this has Wi-Fi on it. You can see the Wi-Fi header here for the antenna. And obviously, audio output, the standard analog out. Uh, if you're looking at the socket by itself, you would almost think that here's one CPU, here's another CPU, here's another <laughs> CPU, and they put four of them on one processor. Four cores, four cores, four cores, four cores, 16, and then the hyper-threading, and there's your 1632 um, CPUs, you know, you know, on one die, uh, and then the 1920X would be three, 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 and three. A 1920X would be a busted 15, uh, a busted 1950X CPU, if that makes any sense. That's usually how it's done. If it doesn't pass to be a 1950, and only one or two are functioning, they'll turn off the other ones to make another CPU. So that's usually how it's done. They're not going to make a specific die just for the 1920s. Um, usually they turn off features of a 1950 to make a 1920X. So anyway, this is a feature pack board, has plenty of, now we're also assuming that this has the traditional uh, driver MOS uh, power phase modules underneath this beautiful heatsink. Um, some of them have 11, I've noticed, some have 13, some have, you know, a 10 plus 3. So these, we can't tell. The heat sink is covering it. But uh, you can see the heat pipe coming off of here, which is nice. This is a beautiful board. But let's go check out another one. Let's go, let's take a look at Asus. All right, this is the Asus Zenith Extreme Supreme FX. Now, this is is also a feature pack board as well it is obviously led you can t see the led lights on the underneath the thing to underneath the board to make you think that it is a led motherboard that's probably on the bottom of it or they give you leds with it which would be interesting this board has some interesting options and we're going to go over them shortly now uh, say from going from X39 board to X39 board, the features are pretty much almost mirrored in terms of the options and the, and the cool features and all this nice add-ons. If you look carefully, it also supports 128 gigs of memory. There are eight slots. You're probably wondering what the heck is this slot? <laughs> Why is that one all by itself? Definitely not memory. If you notice real carefully, there is a the slot is in the wrong spot. So this is for the M.2 boards. If you notice, there aren't any, not like the Gigabyte board where they're physically here. <laughs> There's nothing here. So this DIMM slot allows them to add this board, and then the DIMM slots get connected to that board that slides into this slot. So that's what this is for, just in case you were not sure, you know. Because, well, I'm not going to get the Asus board. There's no M.2 slots. Well, it is just, it's, they, they packed the crap out of this board. There weren't any room for it, so they added it as a slot version. All right, so real quick, like I said before, this one's got, as I said, with the Gigabyte board, it only has a, an 8-pin and a 4-pin. This actually has two 8-pins for the CPU power. Standard ATX connector, uh, 24 plus 4, I mean 20 plus 4. ATX start reset buttons are pretty USB 3.1 header fan header some other interesting things I'm not really quite sure this is amp fan whatever that header is for and we're going back to dip switches which is strange not sure what that's going to be for um, actually if you look carefully what does that say PCI Express switch so maybe this ah Maybe this tells you if you want to do PCI Express 16x and you can tell it, okay, I want it at full speed. Maybe these are switches for the slots. So this tells it. I mean, that's his guessing just from looking at this quickly. Um, based on what I see here, there's a little message here. It says PCI Express 16 switch. <laughs> so 
I, I'm assuming each one of these switches represents the PCI Express slot. One, two, three, four. That's my guess. No idea. Don't have the board in my possession. But you have start and reset buttons here. So what are these buttons for? <laughs> Get a bunch of all these other cool little switches over here. Slow mode. Not sure what this is for. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more over there and, and, and take a better, better look over there. Let's see. I can't tell. Well, here's interesting. Water pump, W pump. So this is definitely confirming that it is possible that they will be including a closed loop water cooling system for the Threadripper, which would be great because for $1,000 or $800 for the CPU, if you're getting that awesome cooler that comes with it, then it's almost worth the money. Because if you're just buying the CPU and you still got to buy a very expensive heatsink and fan and all that doodads, you, you know, you, you're, it's going to increase the cost of the product. <clears throat> so that's a that's a, a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, if that's the case. But we definitely confirmed with this, looking at this, that it will have a water pump and then just some sort of water flow connector. And this is not a four-pin header. This is a three-pin header. So that's even more interesting because it's not regulated by temperature speed yes but no temperature uh, sensor on it so there is a temperature sensor on that which is interesting so that's what the fourth pin is for for temperature then the other one's rpm and then the positive and negative but this is interesting slow mode i'm not really quite sure what that's going to be for another switch here i'm not sure what this is this is a jumper but what does it do we have no idea <laughs> <laughs> that's why i'm zooming in here to, to, to actually look at all the features because you know what i mean if you don't have the board in your in your hands you can't really tell but if you can do this this is a home run it changes everything um ado header I'm not sure what that is rdo header this could be for oh here we are, leds uh rgb so 12 volts so this is power for the rgb power and this is only a three pin so this is three volts and there's a positive who knows what this is for tpm module you guys know what that is for security then they have a molex connector here uh, for extra power probably to power the pci express slots that's what this is for then you have your audio header here so this particular slot here says it's either 8x or 4x that's what this slot is here this one is obviously PCI Express 1x but notice the back is blown out so you could put something bigger in here but only run at 1x which is great that's a home run right there you can actually put a video card in there if you really needed to but you probably couldn't because you have the um, the button cell for the memory for the CMOS so you probably can't put anything bigger this one you can this is a 4x slot and this has a, the back blown out as well so you can actually put something in here that's a little longer but still run at 4x which is a home run this is a nice board this is a real nice board um this says 16x underscore three which is confusing because i don't see the two <laughs> the one is obviously the primary which is here so you have one where's the two three so i'm assuming this is you can't you know this is probably 16x eight and two uh, for number two so one two three four um but then again the the markings are wacky the gigabyte board was a little bit more um easy to understand get cool some cool other headers here I'm not sure what this one's for you have another header here that's funky there's nothing here readable in terms of what it is um let's see I feel like I'm like looking at an alien planet and we're going over stuff like, oh, you see what I see. I see what you see. <laughs> I see what I see. You see what you see. Crap. Uh, socket 4094. Beautiful monster. As I said before, it does look like there's four quad cores here. One, two, three, four. Samished in. This is going to be a beast. This is going to be a beast of a board. So what do you think of those motherboards? Those are pretty pretty intense and pretty cool looking motherboards. I don't want to go too much into it anymore, but the obviously the cost of the boards are, are, are the big factor. I mean, to go Threadripper route, you're talking 
obviously, unless you want to go 16 gigs of RAM on a Threadripper, that's kind of silly. Um, minimum 32 gig, obviously, go up to, you know, 128 if you want, but the, I think the minimum option would be 32 gigs of memory. <clears throat> so we're looking probably between, I don't know, 1700 to $2,000 for either CPU and memory configuration. So anyway, very interesting stuff. So if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Take care.